What is an invasive species? Brought to you by Danielle M. Damore and funded by the National Science Foundation's Books Project, the boat of knowledge in the science classroom at Ohio University. So what is an invasive species? An invasive species is widely defined as a plant, an animal, or some other living organism, such as bacteria, that is not native to the ecosystem you are currently interested in. Additionally, these species are found in an area they could not have reached without human assistance. For example, the Asian carp could not have reached the Great Lakes of the United States from Asia because they are a species of freshwater fish and could not have crossed an ocean by themselves. Humans transported this fish to the United States for the purpose of sport fishing, where it was released in rivers, streams, and lakes. To be a successful invasive species, the animals or plants must establish themselves quickly and propagate. The species that reproduce quickly have very large numbers of offspring, can tolerate different types of environment, and can reach adulthood quickly, all have a much higher chance of success. These invasive species can impact environmental, animal, plant, or human health. Finally, these invasive species can be of great environmental cost. Did you know? Invasive species cost the United States alone an estimated $120 billion annually. So what damage can an invasive species do? Perhaps most evident is that they may prey on a native or endangered species. In Hawaii, the green swordtail fish was introduced to the islands as a form of mosquito control. Instead of eating mosquito larvae, these fish eat gobies, Hawaiian's native, endangered, wall-climbing fish. These gobies can only be found on the Hawaiian islands, so if the green swordtail fish eat them all, they will be lost to the world forever. Invasive species can also outcompete native species for resources. By being more aggressive or less restrictive in their diet, invasive species can get more food, water, or other resources leading native species malnourished or crowded out of their habitat. Perhaps a less obvious, but equally as dangerous threat, is the foreign diseases or parasites invasive species can bring with them. Native species have no natural defense to these exotic diseases and often fall ill or may even die. A classic example is the American chestnut blight accidentally introduced to the United States from Japanese nursery stock in 1904. Over 100 years later, a once common species of tree is now critically endangered because these trees are still unable to resist this exotic fungus that hitched a ride over from Japan on common ornamental trees and plants. While those three examples are the major problems associated with invasive species, there are many others. They can alter food webs by removing key elements, such as a vital producer or a top predator. They reduce biodiversity, which is the amount of different species in an area or an ecosystem, by preying on or outcompeting native species. Additionally, they can change ecosystem structure by altering streams or lakes, or depleting resources that have no way of being replenished. So how do invasive species spread to new areas in the first place? They could be accidentally introduced. The zebra mussel, which has now spread through river systems and the Great Lakes, was initially a hitchhiker in the ballast of ships sailing through the region for trade. When the ballasts were flushed, these shellfish were released into rivers and lakes, where they have since flourished. Invasive plant species are often brought over for ornamental or gardening purposes. While they are not actively introduced to the surrounding ecosystems, their seeds can be spread by wind, water, or by various animals. 
Humans are not able to control these natural factors and often do not even realize their plants are sprouting elsewhere outside of their plots. Additionally, they may also be carriers of disease or fungus that could be deadly to native species, such as the American chestnut blight, which we briefly discussed earlier. Finally, many invasive species are products of the pet trade. These introductions can be intentional, such as the Hawaiian government releasing the green swordtail fish to control the mosquito population, or the release of a boa constrictor in the Florida Everglades when an owner no longer wishes to keep it as a pet. These introductions can also happen accidentally. Off the coast of Florida, lionfish were accidentally introduced when a hurricane destroyed their exhibit at an aquarium and they were released them into the wild, where native fish were naive to this new predator and the population exploded. So what invasive species might you find in Ohio? There are more than 700 invasive plant species alone in this state. This does not include invasive wildlife, aquatic life, or insects. Some of the no most notable species include the feral pig, the Asian carp species, the zebra mussel, the rusty crayfish, and the Japanese honeysuckle, which is pictured here overgrowing many native species. So what can you do? It isn't all doom and gloom, and there is a role you can play, even on an individual level. Learn how to identify invasive species most common in your local area. If you spot them, report them to your county or land management manager. Many local and state parks host eradication days where you can volunteer to help remove invasive plants while replacing them with native ones. Additionally, when landscaping at home, decorate with native plants instead of exotic ones. As mentioned earlier, it is very difficult to control the propagation of foreign plants once they arrive. If you do decide to purchase exotic pets, make sure you do so legally. If at any point you no longer want the animal, go through the proper channels to rehome or return it, instead of releasing it into the local environment. Here is a map detailing the spread of three types of Asian carp once they were released for sport fishing. They have spread through the Mississippi River Basin and are now being found in Ohio and the Great Lakes. So why is this a problem? As aggressive feeders, these fish are eliminating many of Ohio's native fish, which are considered a much more desirable fish to eat. Want to know more? Watch this 10-minute video prepared by the California Academy of Sciences on the rise of invasive species. Curious about invasive species in your area? Check out Ohio's Department of Natural Resources, where you can find lists as well as current remediation methods. Thank you for your time and attention.